But if you try to get one completely doing everything and making all decisions for everybody, you create a revolt by the many and nature forces it back into it until you find this balance of one and many. Hi everyone, this is Dr. Demartini. Today I'd like to talk about the balance of powers and how nature over time predictably creates this balance in a power structure within ourself, within our community, within our organization, within our government, within the world itself. So I'd like to talk about it and put it in, into a context you may never have thought about. Would you agree that you have times in your life where you kind of puff yourself up and get kind of proud? Most likely you have times when you're up, puffed up, and think of yourself kind of exaggerant. And other times you have where you kind of put yourself down and dilute yourself. You expand yourself with pride and you kind of shrink yourself with shame. Uh, self-righteous, self-raunches, superiority complex, inferiority complex. Most of us have these oscillations and in, on times we also have the center where we really feel authentic in ourselves. When we exaggerate or minimize ourselves, we're not ourselves, but when we're actually ourselves, we are ourselves. When we exaggerate, we awaken our narcissistic side where we feel that we're more important than others and we want to receive. When we're minimizing ourselves, we activate our altruistic side. We minimize ourselves for others, so we want to give back to others. We want to give to others more than receive. These two sides are polarities. Now, this narcissistic side raises us up and dominates, and the other side is more recessive. Just like in our gene pool, we have these two sides. Typically, that has been considered over time masculine and feminine forces, the assertive and the passive. But you could see that a female could have the assertive side and the male could have the passive side. So it's not necessarily gender-based, but we've cl classified that over time as a gender thing because typically there's resource orientation and reproduction orientation. We tend to focus on the family or we tend to focus on resources for business. These are the two masculine and feminine forces for about 75% of the population. The lower the socioeconomics, the more that gender split. The higher the socioeconomics, the higher the development of the country, the more they're androgyny. But there's some ratio in society that has that. Now, if you try to go too far on one side, too far masculine, too far narcissistic, too far into the haves, well, what happens is nature forces you to go back towards the have-nots and the, the recessive side. Nature's always trying to get it back. Let me give an example in business. Let's say that you go and do a service and you felt that you did a service but you didn't get paid what you felt it was worth. Your narcissistic side immediately came on board and said, I deserve better than that, more than that. But at the other times you've done services where you feel like you didn't quite deliver what you got paid for. And now the altruistic side comes in and you go, I wanna do more service to make sure I give them fair exchange. Nature has an equity fair exchange thermostat. And so anytime you're not having that in yourself, you have forces to push you towards the altruistic or narcissistic side to get that balance. In the family, the same thing occurs. If you get cocky, you eventually get humbled, hubris. If you get humbled, you eventually get lifted up. Nature's always trying to bring things into balance. And in the process of government, the same thing occurs. If it gets too, in, in the United States anyway, it gets too Republican, eventually forces go put it towards the Democratic side. In the, in the UK, you might consider it goes towards the, the House of Lords, it eventually has to go to the House of Commons. If it goes too far to the House of Commons and to the people, it eventually goes to the wealthy, the few. This has been known as called the law of the one to many, or monarchies and democracies. It's got many names, but nature is forcing things into a balance. If it, it, the law of the one to many says, as you approximate to one, you have forces to move it towards the many, and as you for, approximate the many, you have forces that move to the one. In other words, if you get everybody together and they all try to decide what they all want in a little democracy, somebody has to finally stand up and say, this is what we're gonna do. The one emerges out of the many. But if you try to get one completely doing everything and making all decisions for everybody, you create a revolt by the many and nature forces it back into it until you find this balance of one and many. Nature intends that grail, that centerpiece between the male and female, the genders, between the one and the many, between the pairs of opposites. So powers will oscillate through time anytime it sways to one side or the other to reestablish that equilibrium. Now in actuality, that equilibrium is already there but in our reality of our awareness, we see it not there, and so we oscillate. But in actuality, it is balanced. And this is called the balance of powers, and nature forces us back into that balance. It strives for equity between ourselves and others, 
equanimity within ourselves, and eventually equality going on in society. And so what happens is you may have a handful of people, an aristocracy or monarchy, an oligarchy, or maybe a plutocracy of a handful of people here, and then you'll have a whole bunch of people over here that have less, but the, the masses of those can influence the few, or the few can influence the many. Nature forces those together, and the question is, is if you're a leader of yourself or others, at whatever scale, if you understand that law, you'll be more likely to stabilize a sustainable leadership than if you try to go way over to one pole and then get smacked by the other pole. Nature will force you right back in the other direction. So a masterful leader of themselves will keep themselves authentic, not exaggerating, minimizing. A masterful leader of others will make sure that they think of themselves and others. And a leader of the government will make sure that they're thinking of the government, but also the people. You have to have a balance. Nature's going to force it. We either learn from the outside or we learn from within. A master works from within and brings themselves into homeostasis before the world on the outside forces them to. So I just wanted to discuss that on the balance of powers and know that if you contemplate that in your own mind and look at your own life and reflect about it and see it in, in society and in businesses and companies and your family and the government, you'll see it's working constantly through time. Some of these cycles are very quick. Some of these cycles may take months or years. Some may take decades, but it always is striving towards equilibrium. Nature forces things back into balance, and it's wise to stay there. Thank you for joining me for this presentation today. If you found value out of the presentation, please go below and please share your comments. We certainly appreciate that feedback. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification icons. That way I can bring more content to you and share more to help you maximize your life. I look forward to our next presentation. Thank you so much for joining me.